restoring power to the community. On this episode of Aiken's Occupations, we are shining a light on our local linemen. Whatever you have to do to get lights back on, that's what we're going to do. And you know, be, we've been out in hurricanes with the wind blowing and, and just like Michael just come through what uh, a few months ago and, and uh, we was here working and 30, 40 mile hour winds trying to get lights back up. It's very dependable. You know, you know you got a place you can come every day and go to work. As long as you turn your lights on, I'm coming to work. I mean, you know, I, I love what I do. I love the guys I work with. Uh, it's a challenge sometimes, but I've seen a lot of guys doing it, and I, you know, I might want to give it a try. And I've stuck with it ever, stuck with it ever since. So, been here, uh, I was hired on an 85, so you could do the math. <laughs> when I leave, it'll probably be 35, 36 years of service at the co-op. A lot of the guys that come here, uh, some of them are green as grass. They don't even know what's going on. They don't even have a clue. Uh, we, we train them. We got a bunch of good guys, first class linemen. They help them go through everything they need to learn them and to teach them the safest way to do it. Uh, there's one thing we do not tolerate is breaking safety rules and trying to go up and do something that's not safe. If you're not going to follow them rules, you will get down and that will be an easy way out the door. So. We hire a lot of guys that are experienced and good guys from different places like uh, contractors and you know uh, other utilities that are good at what they do. But usually when a, a guy comes through and is five years after going to school and all becomes first class lineman, you can pretty much turn them loose and let them do because they understand how to do it and know what to do. I've been with Frankie six or seven years. Um, but sometimes people move crews and we lose people or, you know, people go to different places and, you know, it gets shuffled around that way. But, um, and we did when, when we went through our pr apprenticeship program, you moved a lot, you know, because we went from um, crew to crew to crew to learn how everybody else does, you know, how everybody performs their tasks. This is the system we use for, for climbing wood poles. This device right here is called a buck squeeze. This is something we come, they come up with probably, what Bruce, about six years ago? Yeah, probably about six years ago. And it's a fall device. This is, prior to this, there was nothing between you and the ground except for air. These are some of the tools that we use to do our day-to-day -day job tasks. This right here is a, what we call a hot horse. It's, we jack hot wire up with it, and it's essentially a come along, and we'll hook it on both the ends of the wire, and uh, you can jack it up, tighten it up, sag it up um, with these grips. And the way this works, a piece of wire somewhere right here. Anyway, this just hooks to the wire. We hook it to each end of hot hoist. We can, in this groove here, we put the wire that in, and that in, we can jack it up. This is another form. This is for like our neutrals. That would be like a primary. This is a neutral dead end. Same, same, uh, same concept. It just, it wrap, it wrap around the wire, and it, it twists. It's a, it's a preform. The wire be in the middle there, and we can that'll dead end the wire, and this will hold the wire, come, say coming out this way. That's like for the, for a dead end. What do I do with this? This is in the middle. This is where we splice wire, like mid span, like wire gets tore down. Yeah. We can pick it up and we can splice it, you know, mid span. I had a piece of wire. I can show you how it worked. Um, All right, see like, if a tree falls on the line, mm -hmm. tears the line down, um, we'll have a piece, say, come out this way. We'll put that hoist here on this end, jack it up till it gets, you know, sag. And then this little fancy thing here, the end's messed up. It'll, it can go on there, just like that, uh -huh. on both ends. And then we can come off on our hoist, and that's how we hold the, you know, it goes, it, that splices the wire. Uh, 
it, it, it's a lot of safety stuff. You ground your truck, cradle to cradle, you got your rubber gloves on. You know, it's just, whenever you go up a pole from, from the ground to ground, you have your rubber gloves on. Unless the pole is de-energized and there's no way you can get hurt, you could use your work gloves. <clears throat> but any other time, you will have your rubber gloves on. Overhead versus underground, one lineman explains the most challenging electrical lines to reach. Well, overhead is usually pretty easy. You can either, you can see it, you know, but then then we have underground, like all the south side, like Woodside Plantation, all that, and, and places like Cedar Creek, it's all underground. So you don't, you can't see your problem. So you gotta, we got equipment we use to find the faults on underground. Underground is a little more, it's a little more difficult because you can't see it. You, you have to go to each, either transformer, you know, and, and isolate it and we got fault locators that'll tell us you know whether there's a fault on the line or or, or you know it, it'll it'll show you a, where the faults at like previous you won't know we see it in the ground but you can see it on our equipment we have to and it's just that's a really slow process there's there's a hundred different scenarios and and cases and some things is easy to pick back up some spot but most of it is like spots like you know it may be easy to get your truck in here to pick this wire up, but sometimes it, it might go across a swamp. And then that's when it gets, that's where time starts coming in, you know, and people don't understand um, what's taking so long. The guys, when they get in the bucket, when it's real hot, 90s, you know, 90, 80s to 90s, we try to swap out, you know, they'll work it for a while, then the other guy will come down and then they'll, they'll go up and work it. Well, in the heat, it's tough on a man in the heat because you're, you're, if you're doing hot work all day, you're in gloves and sleeves all day, and uh, storms, you're pouring down rain, lightning. But what about for women? Currently, there are zero female line persons within the SC cooperatives. The last woman served in 1994. Whether you're male or female, the crew chief describes the job as... This is dangerous. And, and due to weather and stuff like that, just be patient with us. When the lights go out, uh, we're going to try to get you on as quick as possible. You know, and we don't want to, we don't want you to be without lights no longer than, than we have to. And we don't want to be out there trying to get them on no longer than we have to. Uh, usually when the guys were on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, everybody here. Uh, we got two people that's on call, but if they need help, they pick the phone up, they call us, we come. And, and that, we try to help them get in and out as quick as we can because it makes for long days out in the heat. And you got people like Jaime, he's been here 16, 17 years, Josh, Bruce, uh, anytime the phone rings, we come in and go to work. Thank you for tuning in to Aiken's Occupations. We'll see you next time.